Marker. That's good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Never done that before. Too soon. Son of Rambo, take one. Click. Action. Action. Lee Carter! At least we got the shot. My name is Phil Milner and I play Will Proudfoot. <laughs> Come on, Dad. We're going home. Action! My that was Will. Bill Milner, by the way. Yeah, that was, I just didn't know if you got that. Yeah. Uh, I'm Will Poulter and I play Lee Carter. <laughs> I'm Nick Goldsmith, <laughs> and I play the producer. <laughs> Very badly. Thank you. Yeah, we were doing a garden shot, right? And it was quite serious, and we had guns. And then Nick just walks past and goes, yeah, OK. Yeah, OK, Mum. <laughs> right. okay. I wasn't talking to my mum. I was doing big business. <laughs> my name is Garth Jennings, and I'm the director of the film. That's it. Come on in a bit. That's it. Go out like that. Put it on, make sure it's bigger. Maybe it's just bigger. Bigger snogging, OK? Here we go. We are currently sitting in part of the... I suppose it's... We've, we've, our company is called Hammer and Tongs, and we, we've, we've sort of taken over... Instead of the usual office space, we've taken over barges in, in London. Uh, this is our office on a boat on the canal, on the Regent's Canal in London. Um, so, welcome aboard. Careful the stairs. This is basically where we work. It's weighted with concrete, so it doesn't move too much, which is quite nice. Um, this is the director of the film, Garth hello, Jennings. Hello, He's busy I'm working. I'm being creative and doodling. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm always very... No, hello. How's it going there? I'm just showing them around showing the Showing them around the boat, yeah. yeah. Please don't make a mess while you're here. Leave uh, things as you find them. And uh, through here is our edit suite. Uh, which is where we cut the film. We cut most of the film in here, but then we had to do extra work, so we took a second boat. So instead of becoming a one-boat office, we became a two-boat office, and thus we became an armada. This is this boat we're on now. It's like boat B. Was the boat we used to do all the sound and special effects and prior to that, the casting. Oh, and all the casting. That's yeah. This is where we first met these these two people. And action. Oi. We're not filming for another five hours. Look, peace, blood brothers. The funny thing was, out of all the people we met, you two had done nothing like this before, had you? No, no. that was my Neither of you. first audition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't even know what I was doing. No, exactly. I think that was it. We felt sorry for you, <laughs> and we just thought, let give him the part. He's going to be. Keep him off the streets. No, I remember that very well. In fact, because I remember you especially, you have this thing about a lot of people, when you first meet them, they come in for auditions, they, they try and be very friendly and sort of, you know, that's it's fine. Or, or like, they go a bit too far sometimes. They try and pretend like they're your friend and they yeah. have been for years. And um, it can be a little overwhelming. And you were one of the few people that came in and just sort of like, yeah, what am I, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know what? I come all this way to say sorry. I even bought you a bloody present. You ungrateful little bastard. I was in English. I was just in an English lesson. My drama teacher just kind of held up a piece of paper and went, and I was like, okay. What, was, what did and the piece of lunch. paper say? Audition, get in. I was like, And then, and then, what did they make you do though? Did they make you read from the script or something? No, no, no. They just said, you're two boys. Um, one of you has a camera that you've stolen off your brother. Right. You're sitting on a park bench. Yeah. It was like it was really like. That sounds like the was, film. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was kind of. And it that was, was like, in, improvise, you're quite shy. And what was yours like? Yeah, no, that's quite, that's, yeah, you're quite shy and you're really Yeah, bossy. forceful and bossy. And yeah. you had to make up ideas for a film. Because that's how we met a lot of the other cast as well. We were auditioning them for your parts. Yeah. But people like Charlie Thrift and Sam Kubrick, they'd all had a go at your parts. And we thought they were really good, but not quite right. But they'd be perfect for all these other roles yeah. we had in the film. So it was a good way of finding everyone, actually. And it was lucky we found you because it had taken us five months to find you. What's, what's normal? And, Five days, five <laughs> minutes. No, I don't know. I don't know what the normal time is. It depends, really. Yeah. But because we, we hadn't gone the usual route of going to sort of stage schools and things like that, and more to just regular schools, I think that takes a bit longer. Oh, God, our Heavenly Father, who has commanded us to love one another with thy children and has, has ordained the highest friendship in the bond of thy spirit, we 
exist thee to maintain and preserve us, always in the same bond, thy glory and our mutual comfort with all those who, to whom we are bound by any special tie. I've just done like nativity plays and <laughs> uh, plays on stage. What were you in the nativity group. play? A, a soldier. A soldier? <laughs> I don't remember that being in uh, what's, what's the, the crib. Yeah, it was a bit of a weird one. It was a... a okay. <laughs> Will, what have you done? <laughs> no, I, I just done plays at school, just kind of... And we had drama at school. What sort of plays? Uh, we done really weird ones. We done, like... We did, like, musical, a lot of musicals. We did a few pantomimes. We did um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, we and you did, played? I played... I wasn't even in it. Uh, Action! Very good. And when Didier came in as well, and they was like, you got to meet this guy, he's so cool, he's from France. She'll and I came tweak, in, and yeah. he's like, bonjour, and I was like, whoa. He's he cool. really is the real thing, isn't yeah, he? he? In is. real life, he's yeah. a yeah. cool bonjour guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was only 16 when we filmed it, but even I felt sort of like I should be. But you guys had to go to France, didn't you, to audition? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Duncan. Oh my God. Isn't he brilliant? Well, he looks like a clean cock. Shh. He needs to have some Coca-Cola. He needs Coca-Cola. Oh, I'll get it. Jules Citruc is the name of the boy that plays um, Didier. And we found him by going to France and auditioning all over the place in France. Every single one of the candidates for the role of Didier was uh, somebody who'd never acted before or never really gone for a, a bit, a bit, you know, yeah. it's a similar background to yourselves, although they're a bit, bit older. And the only one uh, who had was Jules, and I didn't know that. Neither of us knew that, I don't think. Well, when we sat he's down, done quite a lot there. He's done everything. He's, he's the biggest he, child star in France. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah. But he's, but <laughs> he is. He's studio. such a. He was such a lovely guy, <laughs> and his and his dad. And we had no idea that he was so laid back he's and so unassuming that he was this sort of child star out there. Yeah, but I'm going to move Didier. Jules is going to come in to about there. Oh, it looks beautiful. You've got to go. Yeah. No. Filming Son of Rambo was less how you think it would be. You'd think it would be all these, like, snobby kind of, oh, yes, let's do this. Everyone's just so laid back and they don't, like, everyone's just so kind. And it's just like meeting friends, really, and just with a camera, you just shoot things. Ready? Steady? I've got everything! Yeah, I can see that. Perfect, thank you. All right. We seriously had no experience. Yeah, yeah. So it just we didn't just... didn't know what happened. There were all these funny sayings. Turn over. Camera. Forty-six Denver, take four. Like when they go, um, thirty-six Baker. Um, oh. it's like Alpha Baker. Charlie Denver Echo. Got <coughs> Charlie. You know, for each take. What is it? I, I don't even know. You guys explain. I don't really know. There's this guy who keeps running in front of the <laughs> camera. Every time I'm trying to shoot, there's this guy that runs in with this. Bloody thing goes crack <laughs> and make some big. Yeah, it's really weird. Get that guy out of there. Yeah. But I worked out that you were about. It was about three days into filming, and it was full. Like all the tricks, all the, all the things that you needed to te get over technically. You'd you'd both. No, got. I, I got quite used to all that. Yeah, but it was like a couple of days. We weren't sure how long it was going to take. Yeah. You knew you could play the parts. Mm. But there's that technical side of it. It's like, oh, do that again, but just look a little bit more here. And mm. there's so much fakery, isn't yeah. there? And another thing that was really weird getting used to was I, I, I thought it was all in sequence, so you filmed it in sequence. Uh, and on our first day, we did the first scene and the last scene of the film. Yes, that's and true. I was like, hang on, this is really weird. Yes, yeah, still, yeah. every What's time I see it, I always think, yeah, that was the first day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. That's really weird. I remember because you were doing that last scene, and you, in the last scene, of course, you have to get very upset, or well, not upset, but moved by what you're watching, your mm -hmm. character sort of. You know, seeing your brother sort of say those words, it means quite a lot to you. I remember thinking, right, I don't know. I knew you were very good, but I thought, right, it's going to be a test. We've just done the opening bit, yeah. which is all fine, having a cigarette and filming the 
pirating a movie, but now, okay, now you've got to sort of, <laughs> without any prompting really, be emotionally moved by something that isn't there. Yeah. And that was amazing for me because also we had hundreds of people behind you. So, and, and you weren't put off by any of it at all. A huge crane right in your face. Um, it was extraordinary. When, I, th I thought that was, that was such a great start for us because it was like, okay, we're going to be all right. I was really nervous because I was like, if I muck up now, they're going to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Just try and find someone else. So get the like, other guy. Get the other yeah. kid. He's the other boy. The expensive one. I don't care how much it is. Just get it. Just get it. <laughs> we were talking about this the other day, and we were saying how the scene where you get thrown into the oil. And, and, and Lee Carter comes to get you out. Crane! Crane! Was sort of one of those scenes where we had high hopes for it. We thought, you know, we knew what you were capable of by this point and we were absolutely confident we'd get it. But it went way further, and way, way better than we could have imagined. Well done! And, and then you, you suddenly went off for 15 minutes and you were sort of getting yourself into a sort of emotional sort of state. <laughs> Action! So I felt like this terrible sort of guy is like, <laughs> so these two wrecks. Get on but, set now. Yeah. Well, no, because we, I was sort of coming back to it, the AD and sort of saying, oh, I don't know what's going on when he doesn't want me around. He's sort of going, because I didn't know you were going to do that. Yeah. Is that not a problem, Chet? Happy? What's that? That's Carter that comes after. That's after. Yeah. yeah. Don't go in there. Go straight across here. Can we walk on this? Yeah. Okay. Go straight across here. Go. You're all right. Oh dear. Grab hold of this. And then that, and that's when he's going to come running out. Um, and you realise there's nothing on the end of it. Well, I love it. Jump. All right, skills. Come in. It's like a really big. Wow! And then just then pile in there. Why well, I could yell at me? Just shout. Yeah, just do a mad bit. It's got to be really, really mental. Wow. Yeah. Very good, guys. One more. Get ready to go again. It's really good fun. It's the best summer yeah. holiday. Well, it was, I was going to say it was your entire school summer holiday, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. You, and a you, bit more. It was true. It was, we kept you off for a bit, wasn't it? Yeah. I got out of boarding school. That's true. Got you out of boarding school. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've only done the littlest scenes with you so far. We're just like, yeah. meow. All right. Yeah. So this is the meow scene. Uh, right, you are... Seen it. Then. Exactly. What's happened is you know there's that huge disaster scene. Getting the film made been took about six years from when Garth first sat me down and said, "Here's some ideas for a film," which were loosely based on 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 Garth's childhood. Yeah, we worked on it ourselves, trying to get someone else to come on board. No one seemed to want to come on board to make the film for some reason. We couldn't work out why. We were sure it was going to be great absolutely convinced it was going to be great, but I think people, the, the common response that we got, people were like, we love you guys, you guys are great. We love the script, but we're not really sure what to do with it. And it's got kids in it, but it's an adult film. <laughs> and that doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so we then made Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which took two years. Um, so we had two years off. Came back after making that, thinking we were going to hate Son of Rambo. So we came back, read it, and it was like, oh, this is really good. This is actually better than we thought it was. The good thing is that he comes in accents and I help him to find Daddy. Went, let's go, okay, we go. Whoa. And Will runs over to the camera and goes, great, cut. But Didier's still going, and you're getting up. Yeah, I'm like, you're like are we done? Great. That's better. Yeah, because he said cut, yeah, and he's gone, silence, you think the wolf cannot kill? And everyone's, he said, shh, come in. And first of all, there, and then kick, kick. Oh, let's kick it. Oh, sorry, sorry. 
Being attacked by ninjas. You see the no, we're making a film. Yeah. Yeah? That's movie making, that yeah. is. That. You were there. You can say you were there when that was discussed. <laughs> One of the problems we had actually trying to get the money from the film was the fact that it wasn't anything like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm. One of the, e the easiest sort of one of the easy ways to keep going is to do something similar to what you just did. Because then people go, oh, it's going to be like that. I know what that's going to be like. And then they they feel more confident. Whereas this was like, OK, yeah, we're going to get these two people who've never acted before yeah. and we're going to throw them in a river and, you know, there so might be some crying. There could be some laughter. Yeah. <laughs> and people go, but no rubber puppets? No, no, no rubber puppets. No. There will be some rubber no, muscles. Passages. You've got some rubber muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that was good. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That was, that was really scary. one of the best experiences I've ever had. Yeah. It's so strange. Yeah. Well, I was called on set later and I just came and Bill just looked like Mr. Universe, and I was like, oh my god, what has happened? Especially here? Bill, who, who's, who I was like in the same sort of shape as you, at your age as well, where there isn't much definition yet. It's coming, isn't no, it? No, I'm tiny. Yeah, you're gonna, but it's, it's in a few yeah. weeks' time, it's just gonna be exploding. But no, so it's quite good to be Muscle Man for the Yeah, day. it was so I fun. I really envied you. It if I'd been so your fun. age, oh. I'd have loved doing that. The film, the film started off, this sort of all started off as just a bunch of notes I'd made uh, one weekend when I was out on my mum and dad's and we were, we were looking back at old home movies I used to make when I was about 11. How old are you now? 12. About, about sort of your age anyway, I was sort of making little home movies for my friends and we'd, we'd seen a lot of action movies and loved things like Raiders of the Lost Ark and things like that but most of all for some reason First Blood, which was the first of the Rambo trilogy, had a real big impact on all of us. Um, and we used to make these action movies based on that. We'd have the headbands and the knives and we'd be running around saving each other from terrorists, organisations, you know. And uh, that was the excitement of it. It's, you know, uh, there's people getting... It was the things where, you know where he makes the traps? Yeah. He makes traps out of bits of oh, stick like and stuff. Where it <laughs> yeah. That's now, uh, but we were sort of... It's horrible, but you can't help but kind yeah. of go, ah. Oh. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, which is sort of awful. It's every parent's nightmare in it's a like way. Nothing it's like, oh single. God, yeah. I think they were happy to see that we were making films about it rather than actually going out and doing it. To yeah. People. Come on, Dad. We go home. The funny thing was when you start right, we started writing a script very eagerly, and basing it completely on all these experiences. The first thing we realised was, because I was writing it from my own point of view, based on my own family circumstances, it was so boring. Because I just had a great time. And there was no problem. There was you no, had a great time. I just had a great time. And, <laughs> you know, mum and dad were great. And uh, I didn't have anything to worry about. I just kept having a better and better time in this script. <laughs> you know, things went wrong, but it wasn't a big deal. And we realised, oh, actually, we realised that one of, one of the peripheral characters was this Plymouth Brethren boy. And I live next door to a Brethren family, and that's why I knew about them, that's why there was one Did in you? the... Yeah. We suddenly realised if we just moved the story next door, it got really interesting. Because then you weren't allowed to watch TV, and that's the biggest influence on all of us. That yeah. was kind of why we were making these films and videos and all that sort of stuff. And then you... And then all kinds of movie things came out of it. And Nick and I definitely wanted to make a movie and not just make something about how it really was. Yeah. So that's why it is a bit fantastical. It does go off into sort of dreamy areas and scarecrows come yeah. to life and all that sort of stuff. But but yes, by making by moving my story next door to a Plymouth Brethren, it became more of a, an interesting film to us. Um, so yes, yeah, based on a lot of personal experiences and people I met, but it's far more colourful and rose-tinted a, a view of childhood than mine really yeah. was. Yeah. You know, I'd love it. I'd love to have gone on a rope swing that big, yeah. or you know, really, you know, Go although we used to go and film in tunnels and all that sort of stuff, it, we never quite got the lighting that good. Yeah. You know, it's sort of it's it's a heightened version of how thing how I remember things. Did you do the tea tray thing? Yeah, yeah, did that. Oh. Blood Brothers was something, and all that sort of stuff, like, I became Blood Brothers with this guy, and I sort of did it, really excited, even though I hated it. He was much more gung-ho than me. We held our hands together, and then we thought, right, and I sort of asked him, oh, how long have we got hanging like this? And he, was, he just said, oh, I don't know. We'll just hold on to it till it, you know, till it feels right. And we did, we scabbed, and we couldn't get our hands apart. It was disgusting. And I remember thinking, I must write that down. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's horrible. Good. Yeah, that's good. Morning, but if you go more like this, exactly. all right. Cut city! I'm worried about cutting. You won't cut it. No, no, it's you blunt. Won't. It's blunt. The end is the end is sharp if you were to stick it in, but you're not. You're just running that across. So it's actually fine. So just that tip, okay? 
just that tip go whoop. Yeah, in the middle. Yeah, in fact, this speed. And you want me in to fact, start? no, more like this. Yeah. yeah, like that. Yeah, just this bit. So you're just cutting across that bit. And the same with Bill. OK, let's reload the blood. You've become pretty good friends through this. <laughs> no, really. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. This is a Bill and Will production. OK, ready? No, 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 no. OK, ready? Ching! That was the one thing you were sort of, it's a bit it's like for a Nick and I, it's like setting up a blind date in terms of, well, we know you guys yeah. are going to be good for the part, but for this to really work, it'd be great if you get on. Yeah. You don't have to become lifelong friends or anything, but it but it, all, it, did, it seems to have become, yeah, it went we way, again, way beyond, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not like we just see each other whenever we're doing things like this. Or, and like, and like after, after this, we'll go and meet up, then we're going to meet up today, aren't we? Hopefully, yeah. Well, that's the nice thing for me, because an awful lot of what happens in the film relies on the two of you becoming Being friends. Yes, yeah, like... Um... And, and it's amazing how you, I can... When I watch the film with other, with other people in an audience, you can see them picking up on the fact that you two get on very well. Like the scene... They're sort of genuine. The really. lake. The scene in the lake. Yeah. yeah. When, when we're laughing, that's us just... That like is genuinely laughing. laughing. Yeah. Because Bill has got mud all over his and face, just... and I just crack up. Thank you for coming to the with Carol Troutman. <laughs> <laughs> One really, really, really good day was the uh, the kite with the dog, and where Bill was getting dragged along by it, and then I had to. And one of the funnest things I was excited about this until I got the I got the sheet of what we were doing like a week beforehand. I was just I think the scenes in between that week were just so rubbish because I just rushed them all, and I was so excited about this scene. And basically, I was just dragged along by a crane on the ground with Bill on my back. It was just amazing. And you, had, you, were, and you then were working with the stunt coordinator as well. Yeah, oh, well, and you? the stuntmen, that's, they are so And cool. then, when we were getting oh. dragged, you farted in my face, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Will. <laughs> that was a great memory. Well, it's really, it was a good oh. test of how how you deep... You were lying on top of you like, how right, Will? Yeah, yeah. Are they going to survive that? That was just like a flying dog. Again, it's all stuff I wish I was doing. Yeah, yeah. As I wanted kids, to have a go at that. It's like the dream. It's like yeah, what you yeah. dream to do. And it's the stupidest holiday. thing as well. No one gets. I mean, unless it was a Force yeah. Ten Gale, <laughs> you wouldn't be dragged along by a kite like that. Especially that kite. And there's, then there's two things. There's two really bad problems with that scene, really, aren't there? There's no wind. Yeah. There's no wind. And that dog was would so never fly. So heavy. Yeah, it would never fly, would it? It's, That's why we needed a fifty foot really crane. Heavy. It was yeah. so funny that when. The bit where he goes through the window and with the teacher. Oh yeah. With the but who cares? It was so funny. <laughs> it made the film. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. So do one more, and then we'll shoot it with full. I'll tell these guys what they've got to do, and 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 we can then do a full exploding okay. angry teacher, and they'll give you something to respond to as well. Adam, this this dog here, the boys had attached the dog to a kite, and they'd flown it they'd flown it around the school grounds, filming it as the flying dog. And then it went straight through the science block window, smashed through, and, and Adam at that time was the science teacher trimming his nasal hair, and it made it shot into him, and his scissors went up his nose, and he's suffered badly, he's got this terrible nose injury. He's a very angry teacher anyway, at the best of times, and he'll start this scene over by the mirror, and he'll be kind of like nursing his nose, and he'll get a little sympathetic mug of tea from a colleague, and then he'll walk over here, and as he goes to get a bis uh, like a cake out of that tin, I just think what he's going to do is you're, you're going to be here like this onto Ruth and then you'll just kind of go Whoa! like that with it and he'll just explode. <laughs> One of the uh, lovely things for us that drew us to the idea originally anyway was although these, these guys are making a film, it's really about their friendship. Mm. You know, if, if you don't have that, you know, running through it, and if yeah. you don't care about their friendship, then really there's no point doing it. Yes. Instead of, I'd probably call this film about making friends more than making a film. It's more about how different backgrounds can still mix instead of uh, making a film and all that. Same really for me. It was not just like friendship on screen. It was I made so many friends off screen and. It was just like a real opportunity. Like I'm, I'm, it's just like a dream come true really fast, wasn't it? It was just yeah. being on a film was just, and it was the best summer holiday and 
it was just so much fun would be one word. Yeah. Just it was it was wicked. It was so much fun. We've got you guys to thank for oh. this little nipper. May, may God blah blah blah. <laughs>